Welcome to Baking Wisdom. This is my latest series based on my new cookbook of the very same name. In each episode, I feature a delectable recipe packed with tons of baking tips so that I can help you be the best baker you can be. And you know, as bakers, we love sharing information, ideas, and recipes. So as a special surprise, I have a virtual guest. I'd love for you to meet Steve Hodge. He is owner of Temper Pastry. It's located in West Vancouver in British Columbia, and he is an expert chocolatier and pastry chef. I know he's going to give us a lot of insight into working with chocolate so we can become confectioners at home. Steve, it's great to have you here. Now, you are an ace chocolatier. I'd love to hear a little bit about your training. Like, how did you end up specializing in chocolate? I originally started in the pastry side, and then I ended up making the move to England. It was a big restaurant. It was called the Wolseley, and they had different sections in it. We got to go through each section for about a month, and then when I got into the chocolate side, there was a chef from France that ran it, and I had never worked with chocolate before, and that was the beginning of like the eye opener to the chocolate world. And I don't know, I just fell in love with it. I love the science of it, and then took the career to the next level and, and never looked back, and then opened a chocolate place. I know home cooks and bakers would love to hear from an expert chocolatier. What are some of the hot trends in flavor combinations? At our shop, we try to keep it simple. Like obviously there's the classics and we try to build off of the classics. And then with the young chefs coming in, they want to put all those, you know, those um, candies, the popper candies that fizz in oh, your mouth. Yeah. They're like, oh, let's do a chocolate like that. Or, you know, there's a chocolate shop that just opened in Vancouver and it's the big hype now uh, in Vancouver. They're just taking chocolate, making chocolate bars and putting Fruit Loops on it and M&Ms and birthday bars. And that just seems to be a big, big trend with kids now. They, you know, the color, the wow factor, all that. The big trends with our shop, with our customers, there's a huge health kick. So they want chocolate that has low sugar. They're, they've been reading a lot on the health benefits of chocolate. So they want high percentage chocolates. Uh, a lot of vegan chocolates people are asking about. Um, so we're seeing that trend in our shop with the older crowd. It, you've got the full spectrum from pop culture, wacky chocolate to yeah. very specific, simple chocolate. So anything goes really. But what are some tips that you as an expert can share for a home baker getting into working with chocolate? You don't need a lot of tools. You don't even need to go out and spend the money on dipping forks. You can use regular forks at home. Um, but really, you need a bowl, a spatula, chocolate, and uh, marble, a marble countertop or a marble slab that you can use. The thermometer is your best friend. In order to temper chocolate by hand in your kitchen, you, you have to be patient. Don't get discouraged because it's not going to happen overnight. And um, practice, 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 practice. I, I actually suggest home bakers to try the seeding method in a microwave, even though the microwave is a little more dangerous because... Really? You can burn your chocolate a lot faster. If you're learning how to temper chocolate in a double boiler as a home baker, you never have. Your, your biggest enemy in chocolate is water. So yeah. if that water is boiling too much and it steams up or they take the bowl off and they pour the chocolate on the, on the marble and water drips in, their chocolate is, you can't bring that chocolate back. If you literally, at five seconds at a time in the microwave and uh, zap it, pull it out, stir it, I, I feel that the microwave is safer for a home baker. Okay, well, that's a great, I wouldn't have thought of that. That is a fantastic tip through the tempering process as you're melting the chocolate up to a temperature, bringing it down, and then warming it up just slightly. What are, the, what are those key takeaway points? Time, temperature, and movement, right? So at 40, let's say 45 degrees Celsius, you want to start tempering your chocolate. You want to cool that chocolate down as quickly as you can. So that's your movement, time and movement. You want to work quickly because if you're, going really slow, your chocolate will cool to a point where there'll be no friction in there to, to break those molecules up. So you have all, they're going crazy, you're slowing them down. And when you get to about say 30 degrees, your molecules are like that. You wanna increase that, you wanna warm it up about a degree or two so the molecules form and set. And that's mm -hmm. the beta five crystal in there. Once that sets, your chocolate's in temper. So if you are tempering chocolate, make sure you have nothing else around you that you have to do and just focus on that chocolate. 
It's so good to hear your perspective. Steve, you've shared so much information. I'm a little bit nervous. I still, even though I've tempered chocolate, I haven't tempered and done chocolate work to your extent. I still always get that little whoop butterfly when I start tempering. Mm -hmm. But then when I do hit temper with chocolate, it's just that, oh, yeah. crushed it. It feels so satisfying. And I want anyone watching to feel that sense of satisfaction and try tempering chocolate. Yeah, because once you get it, you'll know. And it is, there's, a, I, there's an old saying from Billabong for surfers. It's no one knows what it feels like to surf until you catch that first wave and then it changes everything. But there's a, there's a famous saying that Billabong has. It's the same with chocolate. When you get chocolate into temper, you're like, oh, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I can do this all the time. Oh, before I let you go though, you've got some new projects on the go. You've got a YouTube channel. Yeah, we're launching it and it's called Steve Sugar Shack. So for all you home bakers. All right. So anyone who likes following this channel should go check out Steve Sugar Shack. And you have a cookbook coming out. Yes. And uh, you are one of the reasons I wrote that cookbook because you got me <laughs> excited and motivated to do that. So it should be launching in October this uh, 2023. I did get a sneak peek at it, and I have to say it looks fabulous. And it is all about chocolate, isn't it? Yeah, it's all about chocolate. Oh, great. Steve, it's been a pleasure. You have a great week. And now it's time for me to make some confections. Yes. Thank you, Anna. So who wants to play with chocolate? Well, I sure do. And let's jump right into it. Steve gave us a lot of insights that I want to put into application right now. So I am making my elderflower chocolate truffle recipe. This is a butter ganache filling, so soft and creamy, and I will temper chocolate to dip each truffle in, and then I'll roll them in icing sugar or cocoa powder. So the first thing I need to do is make the chocolate ganache. The ingredients aren't complicated, but it's all in the technique. So where a starting ganache is one-to-one, -one, chocolate to whipping cream, that's your starting point. That doesn't mean that's what you do to make truffles. So let's talk for a second about the chocolate first. I've got my semi-sweet chocolate. So it's about 55% um, cocoa mass. That's the combination of cocoa butter and cocoa solids combined together. So that's gonna give me a nice strong tasting truffle. These are not chocolate chips the type you would use to stir into chocolate chip cookies. These are couverture chocolate. They're meant to be melted. You can buy them in chip form like this when you're working with a lot of chocolate. Otherwise, you wanna buy blocks and chop it up before you make your ganache. You'll always wanna weigh your chocolate as opposed to measuring it by volume to make sure it's precise. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And now we have to heat our cream. It doesn't take a lot of cream. I will be adding butter to sort of complete the ganache later on after the chocolate has melted. But I am adding a little bit of glucose syrup. This helps keep the truffles nice and soft and silky in the center. Because if you're going to keep these in the fridge for any amount of time, you want the glucose in there and it is sticky. If you've seen me handle glucose before, it is sticky, stickier than honey. And you would find glucose syrup probably at the same type of store where you would buy your baking chocolate. So I'll bring the cream up to a full boil and have the chocolate ready to pour it on top. As soon as the cream comes off the heat, you pour it. Now we let the hot cream do all the work. You don't need to stir it right away. Just let the cream soften up the chocolate. It's that general transfer of heat from the hot cream to the chocolate that will even it out. If you try and stir it too quickly, you could risk splitting the chocolate. It might be tempting to whisk your ganache, but you actually want a very gentle stirring motion when you're combining the cream and the chocolate. You're adding fat to fat, and we don't want those fat molecules, the cocoa butter, to separate out. It'll look grainy at first, but keep going. And a little bit of baking wisdom. The ratio of cream to chocolate 
is rather low, so it may not be enough heat to fully melt your chocolate. You can always put your ganache on a water bath. You're going to need that after all for table tempering. And just continue until your chocolate is nice and smooth. Now I need to cool the ganache, so I'll transfer it to a pie plate just to spread it out so it doesn't take so long. At this point, you want to cool your ganache to room temperature. It's a good idea to cover it. You can put a piece of plastic or parchment paper on top. It's so that the ganache cools evenly. The surface would cool faster than the middle if it was uncovered. If you cover it, it cools at the same rate. Depending how hot your chocolate is, it could take half an hour or up to an hour, but we're looking for room temperature. My ganache has had some time to cool down so that I don't melt my butter. This really enriches the ganache and gives it that silkiness. So when you bite into the truffle, it just ooh, is right there and then it melts away. So I've just got a couple tablespoons of unsalted butter and I'm gonna give it a little soften up first. And you don't want to add the ganache all at once. Just a little ganache and smooth this out together and then I can add a little more ganache and a little more. There we go and now that I can't see any butter pieces in this ganache I can add the rest of the cooled. And now that the ganache is cooled and the butter has been added your ganache is more stable and so being delicate about stirring it like I did when the ingredients were hot doesn't matter here. I'm adding a little elderflower liqueur that'll give a beautiful floral perfume to these truffles, add a delicious flavor. You could add another flavor liqueur if you wanted. You can also leave it out all together and you don't have to make any changes to the ganache recipe. All right, so now this is smooth and glossy. It's time to pipe the truffle shapes. I do prefer using a piping bag. I've got a plain tip. This ganache may seem too soft to pipe, but it will actually create a beautiful sort of kiss shape as you pipe each truffle. I've got my tray lined with parchment paper. And now to pipe the truffles, just a gentle hand. This ganache is super soft. You'll notice I'm holding the tip a fair distance from the tray, so I'm not letting the piping tip come in contact with the tray. And that's how you get that beautiful round truffle shape. Now, like Steve said, time is always the key. I'm going to let the truffle sit at room temperature for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to pop them in the fridge for 10 just for that final set so they're easy to handle. So I'll set these aside. The time it takes for the truffle ganache to set is just about the perfect time it takes to organize and get your tempered chocolate ready. Let's temper some chocolate. Now, Steve talked about the seeding method and that is when you melt your chocolate in a bowl, as he suggested, you could do it in the microwave and then with that melted chocolate, so you've heated it up, you cool it down by adding unmelted chocolate to it, all in the bowl, stir it, and then you warm it up. And that should create the temperature where chocolate will set at room temperature with a nice shine and a thin coating. As he said, with a snap. But I'm going to show you how to table temper. I find it a lot faster, more efficient, and when you're starting to get to read chocolate, it allows you to see when the chocolate reaches those temperatures and you start to get very familiar with it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my water bath with a little bit of water. You can see just a bit of steam breaking the surface. You definitely don't want that water boiling. I've got a large bowl so the steam will not catch and run into the chocolate and I'm just gonna let the heat do its thing. A little bit of baking wisdom. You want to start off with as clean a work area as you can. So not a lot of tools or things to get in the way. I've got my marble, it's actually a granite slab, 
but it's a nice shiny surface. This is perfect for tempering the chocolate. You may end up getting a little messy by the end, but you should always start out clean. So while the chocolate is starting to melt, let's talk about the importance of temperature. So when it comes to tempering chocolate, the temperature of the chocolate counts. First, we warm up the chocolate, and you've got a range to work with. Then we're going to cool down the chocolate using the cool surface of the marble. Then we're going to warm it up again. When you're first melting your chocolate, if it goes above that temperature range, well, guess what? You have to start again. So you pull it off the heat, you cool it down below 104, then you can start again and warm it up into that range. As Steve Hodge said, your thermometer is your friend when it comes to tempering chocolate, especially as you're getting used to tempering. The pros, after a while, can just look at it and know. Another bit of baking wisdom, a good habit to get into, have a clean towel on hand, so you always want to dry the bottom of your bowl after you pull it off of the water bath, and also avoid setting the hot bowl on your cool marble. It will change the temperature of the chocolate in your bowl, and it'll also warm up your marble. And now I'll pour two-thirds of the chocolate onto my marble. So the rest of the chocolate will just sit in the bowl and stay a little warm. Steve was talking about using two putty knives. You can also use common baking tools. I have a bench scraper and an offset spatula. So it'll probably only take about three spreadings. So we want movement by moving the chocolate around, spreading it so it comes in contact with the cool marble surface, cooling it down very quickly. And this is where you can feel it under the spatula starting to thicken up. And I, I don't know if you can see it, it's actually become a bit glossier. And that's a good sign that we are cooling down to where we should. You don't want it to set on the marble, that means you've worked it too much. And now I'm going to take a moment and check the temperature right inside the center. There we go, 82. Woohoo! I love when I hit those temperatures. Okay, now this is the crazy part. What I'm going to do, I need to get this back in the bowl. This is where it can get messy. And then scrape it right into the bowl and hopefully not on the floor. You want to keep that chocolate moving. I'm going to check the temperature now, so I need to warm it back up. Was that residual chocolate enough to warm it up? Not quite. I'm up to 88. So that means I can just pop it back over my water bath again, just to gently warm it up a little bit while I'm stirring it. This will only take a second. There it is. You do have a couple of minutes. Once you've reached temper with your chocolate, it's not like you have to rush and go crazy. It won't start setting that quickly, but you do want to work efficiently. I'll go get those chilled truffles. You do want to avoid touching your truffles with your bare hands if you can. So that's where the forks come in, but allow you to drop the truffle into the chocolate and then this is a key step letting the excess chocolate run off so you don't have too thick of a coating you don't want to have to work too hard to get into that ganache center of your truffle when you're taking a bite it may be tempting to dump a few truffles into the chocolate at once and then just fish them out but that temperature change of the cool truffles going into the warm chocolate will throw that chocolate out of temper and then it won't set up with that nice shine and snap to it. There we go. Keep in mind, any leftover chocolate you have can be just put in a container and remelted, retempered, reused over and over again. Never want to waste a drop of chocolate. The last step is to actually cure the truffles in the fridge but for no more than two to five minutes. It's just to really give the chocolate that final set so you get the perfect snap. Just one last step, traditional to a truffle. You can roll it in a little icing sugar after it has set. 
or you can do the same in cocoa powder. When you think about it, the original truffle is meant to mimic the truffle mushroom that grows in the ground. So the idea with the cocoa powder is to make it look like the earth. But it is definitely not a mushroom. Making chocolate confections from scratch does take a bit of practice and a whole lot of patience, but I know with these guiding tips, you can do it. Join me again for another episode of Baking Wisdom. Mmm. Mmm. The inside is so silky, and then you have that thin shell on the outside. Oh, you can't beat a good truffle. Mm. And that elderflower just comes in just a little. It's got a bit of a floral perfume. Mm.